Speaking of things that are being killed, CBS has shut down Stage 9, which was a fan-made recreation of the USS Enterprise. Now, I feel really bad about what I'm about to say, guys. Uh, this Star Trek's awesome. I love Star Trek. I grew up with The Next Generation. It, Gene Roddenberry and Star Trek The Next Generation literally influenced my childhood, my morals, my dreams. I mean... I'm a Trekkie, guys, but I gotta tell you, this was never legal, this was never authorized, this was never going to fly. Uh, I'm very sorry, this is not a fair use, but let's go over it. I don't just want to conclude and tell you, but but let's go over it. So, what happened here is some fans created a very beautiful virtual recreation of the Enterprise from Star Trek. It doesn't say which model here. 1701D is in the is in the image here, so I'm assuming that's the next generation Enterprise from, uh, well, that's the Enterprise from the next generation. And they were careful, very, 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 very careful not to make any money off of it or sell it or market it or anything like that. They were very careful to say that they were not an officially licensed project, that they were not affiliated with CBS and Paramount. Guys, that is not fair use. That is not, those are not the factors of fair use. You have to read and understand fair use before you put thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of your time into something. I'm not saying they didn't know this could happen. I'm not trying to be like all hindsight's 2020 and all down on them. I understand it was a really cool project and I'm really sad to see it go too. But the fair use is the purpose and character of the work. Is it transformative? Was their work transformative in any way? No. If you're copying and trying to simulate as accurately as possible something someone else made, you really aren't creating anything now, are you? Maybe there's some creativity in filling in the blanks of how would you get from, you know, 10 forward to, you know, a certain lift shaft or engineering or something. I don't even remember how the printer price is laid out, but, you know, Maybe there's some creativity there, but come on. I mean, the major creativity has been in creating an enterprise that has a bar at 10 forward and has a bridge up top and has nacelles on the back. And they're putting all the things in the same places and this with the same color, with the same shape. It's a copy. It is not transformative. The purpose and character of the use fails because it's a copy. The next factor is the, the amount or the nature of the copyrighted work. Um, is it commercial or not? Well, the nature of the original copyrighted work is commercial. It's most definitely a commercial work. You are copying a commercial work. Is your work commercial? No, in the sense that they weren't making money off of it. But that's, that's, as, that's as thin as that thread is. It's commercial in every way, except that they weren't making money off of it. It is otherwise a commercial fictional work. Third is the amount and substantiality of the portion used. Well, no, they did not use all of Star Trek, but they did use all of the NCC 1701D and everything that they know about it and, and, and all that. And then fourth, the usurpation of the market, the effect of this on the market. Well, the market is not the market for all of Star Trek. And you can't make the argument that, well, we were boosting the market for all of Star Trek. That's not the market usurpation factor. The market usurpation factor is whether you stepped on something that the original copyright owner had the right to do. And if in by making your thing, you usurped the market for them to do the same thing for them to do their version or, or even the very same thing. And you absolutely did do that. And I can speak firsthand about this. I had a disc from 1990 something with a copy of the NCC 1701D as done by, oh, I forget which one of the simulation companies. I don't think it was Sid Meier, it was somebody else. And, and it was a, it, it had L cars and it had, it had, uh, uh, Mrs. Roddenberry's voice, I forget her first name. Um, 
I forget her 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 name, but but it had it had her, it had the 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 computer voice on. You could walk around the thing, and you could do different things on the ship. And it was a big simulator. You you couldn't attack anybody. It wasn't a game, but you could go explore the NCC seventeen oh one D. This is that just updated. Of course, it's usurping the market. It fails on all four fair use factors. And when you fail on all four fair use factors, when you fail fair use at all, you know the whole thing as as it as a whole. You don't have permission. You have to go get permission. You don't have a, a, a legal right to go make the thing. You have to go get permission. So I'm very, very sorry, but we don't even get to how cool it was or how much they didn't pay, make anybody pay for it and how much they, how big of fans they are. None of that is part of copyright law. You have to get permission, and they did not have permission. As you know, this is a community-supported channel. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and you can support more videos on patreon.com slash ljfrench, or by supporting us on by subscribing on, on Twitch, or, or contributing bits and things like that. There are lots of ways to contribute. But thank you very much to our $50 plus Patreon supporters, Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Vera Mantain, Sean McNamara, William Gonzalez, Michael Pierce, Drunkle Tia Marie, Terry Chris, Richard Fournier, and Michael Jones. You are our September $50 plus supporters, but these videos will be going up in October, so I will also have a crawl for the new people for October. I just won't know exactly who you are until the thing rolls over tomorrow or when it gets charged, and I really won't know till October 2nd. So, also thank you to the 200 plus $5 plus supporters that are scrolling on the LED panel behind me from September, and will be crawling on the screen from October when these videos drop as VODs. Thank you very much for all your support. It makes a world of difference to us. It makes this channel possible. It means we stay independent. It means we don't do certain cliche things that everybody has to do from time to time. It means we've avoided mainstream advertising and all that. I still click the checkbox to monetize the videos and I still insert ads in other places from time to time depending on how long the video is. Uh, you can subscribe via YouTube Red to avoid those, um, but we really appreciate the ads that you watch for us um, when you don't subscribe to YouTube Red because that helps also keep us going. It's a, it's a whole diversity of income that is necessary to keep this sort of production going. Someday we will probably be a higher budget production. When we have that budget, I'll, I'll, I'll be thanking you for that too. I really appreciate you all. I am Leonard French your favorite copyright attorney. Have a great week. Why are all the stress licks? No one's taking you anywhere you don't want to go. Huh? Except with me, I'm taking you home. When, when we go, but that's later. Huh? Huh? Oh, oh is, somebody, is somebody a little jealous? Do you think you'll set some attention?